hopefully, if you're conscious and you've been following Sprawl Dynamics and you've been following what's been happening in politics over the last four years, you've been sort of psychoanalyzing Trump. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that I already mentioned, all these values and qualities, as I was mentioning them, I hope in your mind you were seeing an image of Trump because I was describing him almost word for word in many ways. Uh, he loves to brag. He loves displays of power, military parades. He is friends with other dictators and authoritarians around the world. Um, he's extremely impulsive. He has no self-control. He has no discipline. Uh, he's very manipulative and exploitative, opportunistic. He doesn't have long-term plans. He's not a strategic thinker. He's not a systemic thinker. He's just flying by the seat of his pants. He's very intuitive. He's driven by his gut. Um, he's simple-minded. He's not very educated. He will say the dumbest things. He wants respect more than anything. He gets easily offended. He has a very fragile ego. He's extremely narcissistic. He doesn't care about anybody, not even his own family members. Many of them he doesn't care about, um, not even his own sons. Uh, if you've read, you know, stories, inside stories of, of how the Trump family operates, it's a very stage red sort of mentality. Now, of course, Trump is not exclusively stage red. He's also got elements of some blue and he's got plenty of stage orange in him as well. Uh, but he's got a lot of stage red. And uh, the problem with Trump is that he got elected by people who are not very bright and are not able to make these distinctions. They have no idea what Sprawl Dynamics is. And so they elected him, including most of the Republican Party. They started to support Trump. Uh, thinking that he's at stage orange. I mean, they don't understand what stage orange is. But if they did, they would think, oh yeah, he's just a stage orange, like CEO, successful business guy, likes money, you know, has, a, has giant high rises with golden toilets and stuff like that. Yeah, he's just sort of like an excessively stage orange sort of guy. We can deal with that, you know, because most, most Republicans and most people who, um, you know, neoliberals and capitalists, they're stage orange. But what they don't understand is that Trump has a thin veneer of stage orange, but deep down at his core, in his psyche, he's stage red, which is two stages lower than orange. It's far more dangerous. And so now, four years into it, Republicans have sort of been shocked themselves to see how incompetent and reckless and dangerous Trump is how uncontrollable he is, how little discipline he has. And to many Republicans, it's kind of like they've, they've gone all in on Trump because they want to maintain power, but they're not quite able to reconcile. Like, why does this guy act like such a monster sometimes? Why can't he just like be normal? Why can't he be a normal Republican? Why can't he just be the sort of normal stage blue slash orange sort of Republican the way that mo most of them are? Uh, well, because... He's actually got a very deep red core. And uh, and see, you can't you can't train him, you can't teach him. He doesn't learn lessons. He just keeps acting impulsively from his narcissistic impulses. And this offends some conservatives. The good conservatives, the sort of never Trumpers, they saw through it. They had some morals and some integrity, and they saw that this guy is not a standard Republican. This guy is actually hijacking the, the conservative movement. Uh, you know, he's not truly religious. He doesn't respect, mor he doesn't have any morality. He's a serial, you know, womanizer and philanderer. And, you know, there's rape accusations against him and blah, 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 blah. And so, you know, he, you know, he, 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 he engages in, in criminal business activity. He's not really able to run a successful business. So he's not, he's not going to lead us to any kind of, you know, um, sort of neoliberal ideal that many conservatives have is it's not going to happen. So the narrow Trumpers saw through that credit to them. Um, but many conservatives and Republicans haven't. And in fact, they've, they've sort of been pulled by Trump deeper into red themselves. Trump brings out the red in, in many conservatives. And I think many conservatives do have an, a tinge of red in them, you know, some more than others. 
But the danger is, is that Trump stokes that up. And because birds of a feather flock together, other stage red people, you know, they get activated. So we have more hate crime. Racism has now sort of sort of started to, to, to come out from, from the shadows into the open with Trump because, you know, he's been kind of encouraging it and he's been so sort of brash and, and blunt about it. Um, and you can tell, I mean, uh, the biggest problem with Trump is simply he has no compassion. He has no concern for the collateral damage or suffering that his actions cause towards anybody, not even his uh, closest friends and, and, and colleagues and, and family members, right? So that's the biggest problem with Trump. Um, you can't run an effective society and community at the sort of level of complexity that America is at now. You know, we're not some, some banana republic. Uh, we're not some, some underdeveloped country in, in Africa. You know, we're a country with nuclear weapons and, you know, <laughs> space travel and satellites and complex military systems and all this sorts of stuff. Um, so, you know, as Americans, um, we need a leader who's able to think strategically, systemically, Trump is incapable of this. He's utterly incompetent at this. He doesn't understand how government works. He doesn't care to understand how government works. You can't even brief him on anything because you need to, you need to, you know, whittle down a 20 page report to like a single one page sheet and half of it has to be graphics and the other half has to be telling him how good he is, how great he is, you know, praising his ego, stoking his ego. And because he has no compassion, he doesn't understand, uh, what a leader needs in America is the leader needs to have compassion for the suffering of others. Trump doesn't, doesn't give a shit about the suffering of the poor, minorities, the middle class. Like he doesn't care about any of this stuff. It's all just pretend. And he's a great con artist. You know, he, he likes to talk about God and protecting, um, protecting religious freedoms and being anti-abortion and all this. He doesn't, this isn't, this is just, it's just a, he's just, running a con. He's saying these things because he's done some A-B split testing to figure out that that's what these suckers want. That's what you conservatives want, is him to talk about this stuff. He doesn't actually care about these things. But hey, you know, conservatives are in denial about it. If you're a Trump supporter, you're going to deny everything I said here. Uh, you know, but... Um, it is what it is. That's why Spiral Dynamics is such a powerful model. Really, one of the greatest disservices that the media, mainstream media, did during the election leading up to Trump in 2015 and 16 is that they didn't properly make these distinctions for ordinary people. Really, what should have happened is that CNN, MSNBC, even Fox News should have basically been running and saying, look, this guy he seems like he's a stage orange, successful businessman, CEO type of person. He's not. He's actually stage red. So be very, very careful not to confuse him with that. See, if this distinction was properly made to, to mainstream people, then Trump wouldn't have gotten elected because people would have foreseen all the challenges that, that came and all the problems, you know, and how, how reckless he would have been as a leader. But the reason these distinctions weren't made is because the people at CNN, Fox News, and MSNBC and, and other places, they themselves are just completely ignorant about spiral dynamics. They themselves are incapable of making this distinction. It still baffles me to this day, four years into it, I see people you know, on CNN or so forth, um, or even on YouTube, I see progressives even talking about Trump, but they're still not able to clearly differentiate Trump from standard conservatives and Republicans who are more stage blue, orange than red. And then they're shocked by some of the stuff that Trump does. It's not shocking when you understand he's stage red. He's behaving exactly as you would expect him to behave. And this is why a lot of times progressives will tend to call Trump a fascist and Trump call Trump supporters fascists. Um, It's because the reason they're calling him a fascist is because they're they're intuiting, they're sort of seeing his stage red qualities, but they don't know what red is. They don't have that label in their mind. 
So the only label they have is fascist, so they call him fascist or they call him a Nazi or something like this, which is not strictly correct. In a sense, Trump is, <laughs> is in a sense, he's almost like below a fascist um, in his development. But also somewhere around there, I mean, he's too, he's too uneducated to really be an effective fascist. But he certainly has, has these stage red authoritarian narcissistic tendencies, which is basically where fascism uh, stems from. But also fascism incorporates a lot of stage blue elements into it as well.